When you open the actual start here script for the S Industry tutorial, you should find two image sequences. One will be actually smoothing off, and the other image sequence will be using the absolute lock on. Now, these are both identical sequences. Now, as you watch the actual image sequence play on the timeline viewer, you can actually see the actual camera movement occurring within the actual footage. So, if we just press stop on the timeline now and go to frame one, so now we have actually done a smooth and smoothed off all of the actual movement from the camera. What we need to do now is attempt to remove all of the motion from the camera and produce a locked off shot. So I'm just going to empty the actual bin for a second and I want to click on the new sequence and once again bring up the F7 node using the tab function and just view this F7 node. Now once you connect the actual node you will see that they are the same properties as before. However, in this case, instead of using the smooth function, we are going to actually produce an absolute lock mode. Now this calculates the global motion estimation directly from each frame in question and applies it to the actual lock frame which we have selected. Now this method actually removes all of the shake and wobble completely to produce a locked off shot. Now since we're using absolute lock, we're going to be removing all of the movement from the actual image sequence and we actually produce a lock frame. So if we go into the advanced tab and open this out, you will see we have the option for a lock frame. Now this will actually be the reference point for all the successive frames to actually lock to. So all in all, this will be the frame that everything compares to for previous and before to make sure it matches up with the entire sequence. Now, as we are using the absolute lock mode to remove all of the actual movement from the image sequence, we need to move the analysis widget to a different part of the frame. Now, we do this as the actual node needs continuity between the frames to actually produce a locked off shot. So, we need to have continuity between the actual lock frame and the subsequent frames for the algorithm to completely complete the actual overall locking of the movement. So, what we need to do is actually shrink this off and move it to a continuous part of the image which does not change so continuity is always there now we move to this point over here as nothing crosses over the actual image sequence and that part of the actual high and low contrast is always there so instead of leaving it over the middle of the sequence where the actual water drops move over the screen and drip down as there's no continuity between the actual 10th frame and the 60th frame so now we've set the actual analysis widget on a part of the screen which is actually continuous to the entire image sequence and which actually locks to the lock frame. What we need to do now is adjust the actual calculations that we are calculating for. Now in the previous render when we were actually smoothing out the sequence we had the rotation calculation on. Now as before when selecting a calculation when it's not needed in some cases this will actually apply a stray rotation or a stray scale to the actual calculation and produce a render which is unusable. So again what we need to do now is you remove the rotation from the calculations so we're only calculating for the translation of the XY coordinates. Now f needs to analyze the input clip before it can actually render anything useful. Now this analysis is done when you press the actual analyze button in the f controls. Now during the analysis, s keyframes keyframes a four corner pin which will stabilize the clip in subsequent frames. Now these actual keyframes are actually kept in the four corner pin parameter and these will live here. Also on the advanced parameters tab we have the auto scaling function. Now the auto scale now to smooth out or to remove camera motion, f needs to translate and rotate the frames in the actual source clip. Now this leaves black pixels around the image edge. And the auto scale parameter lets you fill in the black gaps at the edges by scaling out the actual output image. So now we've changed all the parameters to adjust it for an absolute lock. We need to once again press the analyze button so actual keyframe analysis can be found. So press the analysis button now and once this is done we should view a render of this and actually view the results
Now, if we view the results of the actual absolute lock, we can see by applying the settings and moving the actual analysis widget over a constant part of the image sequence, so there's continuity between successive frames, we have successfully removed all of the camera movement from the actual shot. Now if we compare this to the actual original sequence, you can see we have removed all of the actual movement from the camera angle quite successfully. Now if we look at all three of the renders, we can see we have the original sequence, the smooth sequence, and the actual locked off sequence here. And you can see the actual changing of the mode of the absolute lock and the smoothing has on the actual image sequence. In some sequences, using absolute lock will not work to lock off the entire camera shot, as the camera movement will change throughout the entire sequence and not match with the lock frame. In this instance, we would use incremental lock. Incremental lock updates the lock frame as the sequence progresses. For instance, if the first frame is the lock frame, the actual sequence will progress until the node gets to frame 5. Then it will go to frame 4 to check if this corresponds to the actual lock frame for frame 5 and then compares the frame 4 to frame 1 to see if the actual shots compare. 